welcome to Feel Good TV. Today we are here in Melbourne at the Fitness and Health Expo. There's an awesome vibe. The doors have just opened, so let's go inside and check it out. personal trainers. Right now I've landed at the stand called the Australian Institute of Personal Trainers and I am with the CEO Adam Jacobs. So welcome Adam. Hi Joey, thanks for having me. Awesome to have you on Feel Good TV. Now Adam, tell us a little bit about what's new and exciting at AIPT. I think the most exciting thing is we've really broadened our footprint. So what that means is we can now offer education not only in the major capital cities but regionally as well. So we started off four years ago pretty humbly with about uh, 25 campuses. We uh, about a year ago moved to about 110 and we're now on 150 locations all around Australia. Wow that's fantastic. Now we know obviously that you guys focus on personal training courses. What other courses do you have available for the fitness industry? So we've identified that there is unfortunately a bit of a knowledge gap in the industry in terms of business. So we've found that a lot of personal trainers have a great understanding of anatomy and physiology but their longevity in the industry is somewhat tarnished only because of that knowledge of how to run a business. So we've developed the Diploma of Business which has been contextualised for the fitness industry which is a nice dual qualification. So people do surf for fitness plus the Diploma of Business which really enables them to run a successful business for a longer period of time. So that's really quite a nice progression Adam where they're going from running their own business but also learning the components of personal training but most importantly how to run a business so it really does go beautifully hand in hand so thank you so much Adam it's great to catch up with you and if you are interested in starting a career in personal training check out the Australian Institute of Personal Trainers thanks Adam thanks for your time governing board for the fitness industry is Fitness Australia and right now I am here with the CEO Loretta Stace. So welcome Loretta. Thanks Joey. It's great to have you here at the Expo. Now tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and what's been the highlights so far. Well Fitness Australia really loves coming to the Expo. It's, it's our time to connect directly with the industry and find out what's going on in, in the world of health and fitness and uh, just being around all the people and everyone's very excited and interested in what's happening so we love being part of it. Um, we also have a business advice centre set up here at our stand where we offer um, expert advice for people that come and book in about marketing and risk management and um, insurance inquiries or anything to do with uh, business or professional registration. So it's a great time for us to connect with the industry and also provide some support and help to them at the same time. That's really good. I like the fact that you can provide that support, especially to fitness professionals in the industry. Having access to the business centre here at the Expo is a real bonus, yep. bonus for them to know that you know that, that can help them grow their business as well. That's right, and that's what it's really designed to do. Um, even though it's a you know it's a quick sort of um, five minute or ten minute approach, it still does a lot of uh, gives a lot of benefit to those people. That's great. Now, tell us a little bit about where you think the fitness industry is heading in the next you know year or two. There's always a lot of change and diversification in the industry. It's um, it's there's a lot of entrepreneurs in this industry, so new things uh, pop up all the time. Um, but. Essentially, uh, there's still a lot of growth in the industry, but particularly around that small micro business. People these days want a, a customised and tailored approach to their health and fitness we're seeing. So there's a lot of opportunity for people to start small businesses that cater to those different needs. And uh, consumers are becoming more health conscious, so they're more interested in um, exercise, health, fitness activity. And we have an ageing population as well, and so there's a, there's a large number of people out there that are thinking about the quality of their life. Um, and so considering um, working with a fitness industry uh, service provider to help them with that. So that's what the industry is all about, um, helping people uh, have a better life and achieve um, results and, and just have you know, much better quality of life. 
so. It's really true, you know, the passion behind the industry is all about helping. Yes. Helping others and reaching out so we can have healthy Australians. That's at right. The, at the end of the day. Well, thank you so much, Loretta. It's been great chatting to you and uh, hearing more about where we're going as an industry and also the great things that Fitness Australia are doing. Thanks, Joey. Thanks. but also the Men's Health Man of the Year, Damien. So welcome. Welcome. How are you going? Good, thank you. It's great to see you here at the Expo. First of all, congratulations. You know, you've got the title Man of the Year from Men's Health. Uh, how, you know, how did you get that? Did you have to, you know, do anything spectacular? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it was, it was quite good, like, uh, because it's not about being a model, more so a role model, so it was, it was quite appealing for me. To, to go in this competition, I guess. Uh, I've got an organisation called Paddle Against Child Abuse. So for me, it was like an extra stepping stone. So just before, it was quite good time because just before I paddled from the Gold Coast down to Bondi, I saw I paddled by hand. Wow. So that was to raise awareness for PACA, Paddle Against Child Abuse as well. So it's all, um, you know, it's just organically moving ahead to where I want to, which is to build beach houses around the world for abuse kids. So inspiring and I mean paddle boarding from the Gold Coast all the way to Sydney solo how many kilometers are we talking and how long did that take? Uh, so it was 800 kilometers and it was 17 days in the water so I try and paddle about 50 kilometers a day but yeah it was, it was solo so I had no support boat or anything like that I just kind of text Facebook you now this is where I'm leaving from this is where I arrived um, the rest of the time was just by myself out in the ocean, except for the sharks that came every now and then. Really? There were sharks? Yeah. Circling you? When you were paddling? Yeah. And you had to put your hands in the ocean? Well, I had <laughs> And on the second day, one of them hit my board, <gasps> flicked the rudder around, so I had to actually get off into the water, go to the back of the board, flick it around, climb back on and keep paddling again. So that was a little bit gnarly and it sort of hung around a little bit. But um, then after that, I didn't see too many. You saw one really big one, but it was kind of too big to be scary. It's more like, whoa, how's that? Um, but yeah, once I got down in Sydney and near Merriweather, they um, made like a 3.5 metre one trailing me for a while where I had to come in and then they closed the beach down again. Wow. Would, would you say that would have been the most challenging part of it or more the endurance? Like just being on edge thinking, you know, the shark is following me or, you know, the distance. What was really the most challenging component? I think uh, definitely the most challenging was the mental side of things. I, you know, the fatigue side was sort of kicked in a bit, but yeah, the mental side of things, I trained for a long time, about eight and a half months for it wow. every day, so it's, um, I was definitely ready in my body to do it. And because of what I was doing before Packer, um, yeah, I knew I had to get there, I knew I was going to get there, I guess. Well done, not only on, you know, doing such an incredible job of, you know, paddling from Gold Coast all the way to Sydney, but doing the awesome stuff that you're doing, really making a difference, and that's really important. So, congratulations again on all your achievements, and good luck for the future. Cool, thank you. Tell us how you found the expo so far. Oh, it's really good. It's uh, it's great to be amongst so many people who are all like-minded, love fitness, are enthusiastic about it, and all want to come here and be a part of it with everyone else in the industry. It's really good. Yeah, it's really awesome. There's a great vibe here this weekend. Now, tell me, how long have you been doing gymnastics for and uh, mastering that little handstand walk <laughs> that you got going on? Uh, I've been a gymnast since I was five, so I've been doing it for about 20 years. Um, I've been I've retired now and and just kind of keep it in my workout as a bit of fun and just so I don't lose any of my skills and keep up the same body weight strength. Awesome. Now, you're super fit. What's a, a week in the training regime with Loz Hannaford? Uh, well, it, it varies. A lot of the time um, I just train at home in my lounge room or if I go to the gym, I kind of it's, everything I do is all body weight training and incorporating handstands and all that sort of stuff in it. Um, 
but yeah, it, it kind of yeah, it varies. You know, it's all similar, but um, depending on the day and where I am. But everything's just all body weight and, and a bit of cardio, a bit of strength and fitness and all of that. Yeah, it's really good. So there you have it. You don't need any equipment at all to work out and feel good. <laughs> so it's great to see you lots and uh, enjoy the rest of the expo. Yeah, thank you.